Hello. Hey guys. So we have five viewers present in the live stream. So I hope I'm streaming. Can I get a hell yeah? If you guys are receiving my feed, I'm going live simultaneously on um, Light Hall and YouTube. So can any of you just type it, type, type it down in the chat box if uh, y'all can see my screen. Eight viewers, all right, let's keep the numbers going up. Let's just wait for a couple of minutes and just wait for a few more people to join in. And then we'll just get right on with it. It will be really cool if you guys engaged in the live chat. I'll be able to answer your questions live. If you have any queries, any doubts, also can participate in the poll. Let me know if you want to uh, you know, have more live sessions in the future. That will be really cool. All right, we have five yes. Great, so you can count on that. More live classes coming up in the future, definitely. All right, I'll keep the I'll keep the poll live till the end of the session, so that I, I can check out like how many of you actually looking forward to more live streams in the future. So, right before I start, I just want to know in the chat box, any of you just can. Uh, let me know if I'm streaming. So with your green signal, I can proceed with today's session. Also, in the meantime, I would like to let you know that I'm doing this for free. I'm taking this session for free because I like sharing digital art tutorials with you, with you guys and I try to make my content free as much as possible so that everybody can access it and it'll be great if you guys uh, could support me because you know I would want to go full time with this in the future and, and your support will really help me to achieve that goal in the near future and there are a couple of ways in which you can uh, support me so you can go to my YouTube homepage my, and you can click on this buy me a coffee option and it will redirect you to Kofi and you can buy me a coffee. That's one way. Other way is that in the live chat box right over here at the bottom, you have this dollar sign. Show your support for the geek card. You can click on that and you have a couple of, couple of options like super stickers. You can buy super stickers and get, uh, you know, custom animated GIFs that you can send or you can go for super chat and you can send me custom messages that are going to get highlighted or pinned and it'll get they'll be easily noticeable throughout the video and I can you know, get back to you these are a bunch of ways in which you can support me so yeah now all right so the boys you can see me Trang yes thanks for the green light so I'm streaming, that's great to know. So without further ado, let's start with this stream. All right, so as you've probably seen, uh, come to know from the thumbnail and the title of the video, it's about painting pizzas. Everybody loves, everybody loves uh, pizza, right? Everybody loves pizzas, almost everybody. Uh, I do, sort of, so uh, I'm, most, I'm mostly a 
sandwich person, but you know, pizzas are not too bad, right? There are a lot of pizza lovers out there, and today we're going to be drawing pizza in a very cool, stylized uh, art style that'll be fit for video game arts, or board game illustrations, picture books, children's book, children books. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. So, most of the people who subscribe to my channel are have come because of background painting videos, right? Um, background landscape concept art, speed art videos, and uh, beginner tutorials such as painting, uh, the landscape basics, fundamentals of painting, values, element painting, and so on. So they are background lovers, they are character design lovers, and they are people who are into food illustrations. For example, my girlfriend. She does great photo illustrations. Uh, you can go check out her, her Instagram page. I'll put the link down in the live chat section. You can go check her out. You can give her a follow, show her some support. And these are some of her food illustrations. As you can see, some really you not know, delicious looking food illustrations right here. You can go check out. Uh, these are mostly Indian dishes. If you're familiar with Indian cuisine, uh, you're going to love these. And there are some other cuisines also, like, you know, waffles. Delicious, right? So give her a follow, show, show her your support, and you can follow her YouTube channel as well. She does um, speed art video of all these cool uh, food items and illustrations. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and show some support over there as well. So today, coming to coming back to today's, all right, facing some error with uh, Light Hall. I'm gonna re-record that. All right. So that was all about today's uh, intro. I'm just gonna put the link to her. YouTube channel also in the live stream so that you can go and subscribe to the channel and show some support. Okay. All right. So coming back to today's topic, pizza. Now, pizza, so y'all can tickle murky too. And I'll press Alt and Shift on my keyboard and just go all the way up from the center, pull it back down, so that I get a uniform circle like this. I can press the arrow key on my keyboard to sort of center this, and then I'm gonna fill it with a weedish color, which is like a light yellowish color. Alt backspace is the keyboard for filling the shape. Make sure you're doing it on a new layer. The transparent background. Cool. So that is filled. And then the next step is to create the main surface of the dough or the pizza base. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to slightly change the color just a little bit to sort of understand otherwise that this is this is the area. Okay. And then I'm going to Contr press Ctrl T to transform this, and I'll press Alt on my keyboard, Alt Shift. If you're using a more latest version, then you know you might uh, not want to go for Shift. So to uniformly scale it down. So scale it down as much as you need. This feels fine. This kind of thickness feels all right for the pizza's edge, do pizza dough's edge or the base edge. And I'm gonna press enter. All right, so now we have the edges of the pizza. Cool. Then I'm gonna press control on this layer and it's gonna select that area. So I'm gonna come down to this layer, the weirdish color, and press backspace to get rid of that area. Okay. And I'm gonna pull this base layer all the way down. And press Ctrl T to slightly increase the size. Okay, to get rid of any kind of empty pixels in between. 
So that's the first tip. That's how you lay down the foundation of your pizza. Okay. All right. Next step is to give the pizza dough's edge a bit of uh, volume. It's not, it's, it's not usually this smooth or perfect or clean. So I'll go to that layer and I'll pick a hard textured brush. This is what I'm going to go with. You can find my custom brush download link in um, the video description. So with 100% opacity and opacity pressure control off, I'm going to draw a very, uh, I'm going to try to give this edge a very ununiform and random feel. I'm going to increase the flow to 100%. It's going to be 100% by def default. So now, as you can see me, making this little less perfect giving it some slight bumps here and there the subtle amount of texture gives it a bit of a you know, sketchy feel try not to go too crazy like you know going all wonky like this it's gonna make it look like you know a blob of uh, melted cheese which you don't want try to stick along the edge of the circle that you already have and just give some occasional bumps that was for the outer edge now we're going to repeat the same thing for the inner side as well except for the inner side it might be a little more this time we can we have the freedom to go a little more crazy. You can see me doing more curvy shapes now. And here we go with a very large uh, bump curve. All right, I think that looks great. And in case you feel like it is uh, too thick, you can always select it like this with my lasso tool and Control T and Alt Backspace. Sorry, and Alt and just drag it up from any of the edges to sort of increase the size just a bit. That way, you know, the thickness reduces slightly. And check how much changed. All right, I think that looks good. Great. Okay, next up is we're going to put down some sauce on the base. So I'll take a new layer and I'm going to fill it with a very uh, hot red color to signify the sauce. It's going to be uh, somewhere around here and press alt backspace on my keyboard and now I have that saucy color of the base and for the edge of the dough I can press ctrl B on my keyboard and push it slightly towards yellow so, and uh, red to give it a bit of orangish yellow Okay, that looks good. Now it's time to put down the cheese on top of the sauce. All right, so I take a new layer, and this time I'm going to use the lasso tool to make a very rough circle, but make sure to uh, keep some empty space between the dough, dough's edge, and the edge of the Sauce uh, edge of the is a edge of the 
uh, cheese because you want some of that sauce to be visible as well. You want to cover the entire base with cheese. So, and this time I'm using the lasso tool, but make sure that the second option from up top here is selected. That way, no matter how many selections you make, they all keep getting added. So I'm gonna make a very rough circle like this. And fill it with an even brighter yellow this time. Alt backspace. Done. One thing that I feel is that the edge of the pizza pizza dough is still a little thicker than I would want. So I just I'm gonna select that. And this time I'm gonna press uh, control I, control shift I to invert the selection and control T and Alt shift to pull it back in just slightly. This much is fine. Okay, press enter and that's it. So we are slowly getting there. We are laying down the foundation for the pizza. Now coming back to cheese. I'm going to take a new layer and with that same brush that we use for the edge texture, I'm going to reduce the, uh, the size of the brush and we're going to add some definition to the shape. So I'm going to paint some wavy curves. For that, just let me see if all of that is being streamed. Okay, so if any of you guys have any suggestions or would like to uh, any feedback or any queries, feel free to engage in the chat section and, you know, super chats and, you know, super stickers to support me will be greatly appreciated as well. Okay, so now for the cheese, it's going to be a very nice melted cheese, molten cheese spreading out. So I'm drawing these waves and they're not always going to be pointing in the same direction some of them are can be you know pointing against each other like this some waves can point counterclockwise some waves can be a bit clockwise but you get the idea Keep the waves coming. Almost there. Okay, now that we have done that, it's time to add some stray bits here and there. So I'm gonna reduce the size of the brush and paint some loose curves like this. So this is again something that follows design principles, okay? You can't, you shouldn't have a bunch of very large uniform shapes spread out throughout your artwork. There should be variations. So just like I have this really large piece of cheese. We have some smaller bits here and there. It's overall going to improve the design and it applies to everything in life when you're painting. So some large circles like this, some smaller circles, right? Some variation in the number. I already see the difference these make. So these are mostly going to be throughout the edges of the pizza. Wherever you see a large negative space in terms of the sauce, 
can do that. We're almost 30 minutes into the stream, and this is going to take roughly about an hour or just a little bit more than that. So after that, YouTube may be able to create a delicious looking pizza in less than an hour, or about an hour. So once that is done, next step is to paint some of those circles inside. For that, we are gonna be merging these two layers so right click and merge down or the other shortcut is control e on your keyboard you select the topmost layer and you want to merge these two control e and it'll merge it down with the layer below now go to select the eraser tool and select the same brush that i was using and this time i'm gonna erase some of those curves from the main on cheese layer. Some large chunks, some smaller chunks. And this is really turning out to look quite you know, cheesy. This is the word I have in mind right now. Try to balance the larger circles with little more amounts of smaller circles. And I think we are good to go with the cheese thus far. All right, now next step is to add the other ingredients. But before we do that, let's add some volume to this pizza. So we'll start off with the edge of the pizza. So I'll take a new layer, set it to clipping mask. So you can right click on this layer and click on clipping mask, or you can press Alt on your keyboard and just hover the mouse pointer in between these two junctions and you may get this option you can, you can click on that and it will give you the clipping mask or just right click and create clipping mask that way anything you paint on this layer is going to stay bound within this base layer that's the whole trick coming back to the new layer that we created i'm gonna select a subtle uh texture brush and instead of directly picking the shadow or highlight color, I'm going to pick a very light gray color and set this layer to multiply blending mode. So anything I paint is going to look like this. Now I'm going to reduce the opacity to somewhere around 20% and reduce the flow to around 30% and increase the brush size. And then paint along the sides of this pizza dough. And make, make sure that it's in multiply mode while you add it. So low opacity, low flow relatively larger size and we are adding some texture and volume to this pizza. Now, make sure to decide on the primary light direction. So let's say the light is coming from up top uh 
top left corner. So most of the left side is going to be in, uh, it's going to receive the highlight. Whereas the lower, lower right side is going to have most of the shadow. Some of the areas can have a bit of hard shadow, while some can have a bit of have a bit of soft shadow. So for the hard shadow, you can just brush it multiple times there to get that sharp edge. Some of the places. And I think that's good. All right. Next step is to add some colors to the shadow because right now it's look, it looks quite dull and grayish. So I'll press Ctrl B on my keyboard to bring up the color balance panel. I'm going to shift the pointers towards red and yellow. You can see some colors coming in to that. So a bit of yellow and a bit of pink. And that looks great so far. All right, now next up is we're going to add some highlights. So I'm going to take a new layer and set it to overlay blending mode. I'm going to take a bright orangish yellow color from right here. And the same settings as before while painting the shadow, I'm going to paint the highlight. Okay, now that the highlight is done, the whole layer can be overall a bit on the brownish side. So I'm going to take a new adjustment layer, set it to uh, take a level adjustment layer and push the middle slider towards the right. Just a little bit. And okay, now we have more accurate color for the those edges. Next up is we're gonna add some more textures in terms of strokes to give it a more artsy feel. So take a new layer and again, once again, I'll choose multiply, pick a light gray color and I'll choose the brush I use for the edges. Okay, and this time, Capacity and flow are going to be maximum. And now it's time to paint some lines like this. And switch off the layer opacity control. Try a brush with a little bit more tapering.
strokes will follow the curve of the dose edge. There won't be straight lines, there will be a bit of curve in some areas. And I feel like I can reduce the amount of that. So I'll erase some of the lines. Let's not make it too much. I think that's better. Now, next up, let's break the monotonous nature of this. So, enough with the lines. Let's put in some you know, circular shapes or dots like this. Again, not too much, very occasional. And some of these can be, instead of a dot, it can be an actual circle. You know? All right. So once we're done with that, again, just like before, Control B, and I'm going to Push it all the way towards red, slightly towards yellow and pink, and then reduce the opacity because I don't want this to stand out too much. All right, that's done. So, how is it coming so far? Let me know if you're enjoying the stream and finding this useful. So next I'm going to be adding some highlights to this. I'll take a new layer again in the clipping mask, set it to overlay, pick a very whitish bright yellow color and take a textured brush, and increase the size keep it small and with very low opacity somewhere around 30 percent i'm going to be painting some highlight but from the middle okay like this and it's going to be occasional in some some areas not everywhere This is going to make the pizza stand out a bit more. Okay, now I'm going to decrease the opacity and then paint some extra highlight along these lines that I drew before. Like that. Make it a bit brighter. Make sure that the highlights are facing our primary highlight direction. Now we're adding some depth into this.
almost done adding the highlights. And yeah, that's it. We are done with the highlights. If you want, you can reduce the opacity of these uh, a bit more. And the highlights can be toned down a bit. So desaturated just slightly from using control U to bring up the hue saturation. And I think that looks good. So that is done, right? Oh, so Ben found it a little bit hungry. Well, you can go ahead and order yourself one. Don't wait. <laughs> All right. Next up is the sauce. Okay, so we're more or less done with this. We might revisit this in the future, but for now, let's stop there. Coming to the pizza base. So what we're going to do to start off with is go to this layer, this go layer, okay? And press control on your keyboard and select this area. Then come back to the base layer where we have the sauce added. Take a new layer on top and fill it with the, no, just pick the shadow color from the stores agent, all backspace. So it's there, but you can't see it because it's in clipping mask. If you move it around, you can see it, it's there. Okay, so I'm gonna set it to multiply mode, multiply blending mode. And then I'm gonna go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and ta-da, we have that uh, shadow and the depth. So that is done, simple and easy, but we might need a little bit more shadow on top, right here, right over here. So I'll take a new layer, set it to multiply, and with the texture brush that we are using for the shadows, we'll increase the size, decrease the opacity, and brush it there. Just a little bit. And yep, that is done. And uh, just reduce the opacity slightly if it feels too dark. Okay, right, so that is done. Now, next up is, mm -hmm. it's time for cheese. So let's give cheese the same sort of treatment, okay? So I'll click on the cheese layer, just control and click on the thumbnail. Coming back to this the sauce layer, I'll take a new layer and just fill it with the color, just color of the shadow from the dose edge and all backspace. And then set it to multiply and filter, blur, Gaussian blur. But this time it's gonna be a lot less. So while you're using any kind of uh, hovering controls like this, you can zoom in or zoom out by pressing control and minus or plus, okay? So this time, the, blur is, the shadow is not going to be that much. So set it to somewhere around five, like six point three. That's okay. And then click the, choose the arrow key and just from the keyboard bring it down using the arrow key just a bit like this. It gives a hard, uh, like a drop shadow effect, and I'm just gonna reduce the opacity very slightly. It's gonna be a subtle shadow. Okay, right, that is done. Now, coming to the pizza base, I'm gonna take a new layer on the cheese layer, set it to clipping mask, and now pick our uh, texture brush. Use the opacity and the flow. Then I'm going to pick this color of the cheese. 
So what happens in a pizza is that the edges of these uh, pizzas get a little toasted, burnt. So they're a little darker shape than the normal light yellow of the, of the cheese. So I'm gonna push the color slightly towards orange and bring it down just a little bit to make it darker like this. And then just brush this along the edges of the pizza. And be a little darker. Increase the size just a little bit. I get that burnt or baked feeling. So how's it looking guys? Is it even remotely delicious or it's probably not going anywhere? I recommend that you guys should, while you know illustrating food, while doing food illustrations, uh, look at references. Because what you have in mind might be something, but in real life, it might look like something else. So look at a few references and then start off. I did, I did my research. I looked at a lot of pizza photos and that's how I sort of came up with the idea. All right, so we are sort of done with that. So how are we looking? Okay. So we are most more or less done with the base of the pizza. Next up is going to be adding the components. Before we add the components, let's make a very rough uh, slice division. So take black just for a guide, you know, and just press control on my keyboard. Sorry, press shift on my keyboard and just make stroke like this. And once again, one more, just to get an idea of how the division is going to be. This is just for reference. This might not be what we will be using in the final one, but just for reference. Okay, so what are the main ingredients that might go into uh, the pizza? Well. You're going to have some salamis, some tomato slices, some mushrooms, bits of chicken maybe, some basil leaves or herbs, some onions, onion rings, and uh, olives, and um, maybe some bell pepper or pepper. Okay, some red and green or yellow peppers. Those are going to be the main components of the pizza. So we're gonna have we're gonna use a, sort of a cheat for these some of the elements such as the salami and the mushroom and um, maybe tomatoes. We're gonna paint just one one of those, and we're gonna be you know reusing those, distributing those across uh, across this pizza base. So I log this layer, and I'll take a new layer. And I'm going to draw a mushroom. Take a light desaturated purple that is almost white, but not, not exactly white. Something like this. Good enough. And I'm going to paint a mushroom. So I'll start off by this curve and then and that's it yeah and then i'm just gonna you know, fill it just quickly sketch the inside of mushroom
take the eraser and just erase the extra areas that I don't want. And I think we have a uh, the main shape of the mushroom. Next, I'll take a new layer, so it's a clipping mask, and then paint the you know, the darker inside parts of the mushroom. Make sure that there's no empty space and it's all solid. For this, I'm gonna take you know, the, a darker shade and just do this. Get that darker side. Of the mushroom great I think that is done and finally now clean some soaks inside with a lighter color this time we can just uh, decrease opacity later on for what we have I'll just make it a bit brighter more saturated and I'm gonna paint some you know some strokes like this to make it look cool and give it a sense of style, a stylized feel, right? And then some curves, occasional curves here and there. This and I think our mushroom is ready. Before that, I'm just gonna give final overall sense of depth with a bit of gradient inside very light just that much yeah that's good so i'll put it inside a groove the whole thing and i'll take a duplicate of that and just press Control E to merge it. So now we have the mushroom. I'll keep it aside like this. Mushrooms ready. And next up, we're gonna paint the salami again. Take a hard textured brush and just pick. Let's just pick the color of the sauce. Get and then just shift it towards black and desaturated so that we have this kind of meaty meaty color and then create a circle draw a circle like this if you're not comfortable with that the other suggestion is suggestion is uh, pick the elliptical murky tool press alt and shift on your keyboard and just it creates a perfect circle like this and just press all the backspace on the keyboard to fill it with that color. Control D to deselect the selection, and you have some shape. But it's too perfect, so I'm just gonna brush on top of that along the edges to give it a little, little bit of a ununiform shape. Because it's meat after all, it's processed meat. And there are wet salamis as well, so end of the day they're all like organic products so they can be so perfect like a circle so this is much better so well i mistakenly drew uh, the salami on the mushroom there so i'll select this and i'll press Control shift j on the keyboard Control shift j and i'll just separate the two layers okay now i'll take a new layer on top of the salami layer clip it and make it a clipping mask and then I'm gonna set it to overlay blending mode, pick a bright yellowish color, and with our textured brush, low opacity, increase the size, and just do a bit of this. It's gonna give it a, you know, like a sort of like a 3D volume. And yeah, we are done with that in overlay mode. So I'll take another layer, take a dark, just pick the base shade of this salami and just push it towards more, more of a darker shade and reduce the size of the brush and just, just draw the outer edge again very roughly 
I think two defined. All right, so that is done. And finally, it's time to paint some you know, textures in there. So for that, let's pick the color of the base and paint some circles. We're painting a lot of circles today. Or the salami. I think that is enough. And finally, I'll just pick the shadow color to paint some highlight in there. Got some shadows. And maybe some highlight. So I'll pick the lighter color, push it towards the brighter red. Just a little bit. So our salami is more or less ready. Paint some few more dots here and there to get that meaty texture. So that is ready. I put it all inside a group, create a duplicate, alt and alt, click on the group and drag it down or up. I'll create this group, control E2 merge it I, I have the salami as well okay pepperoni okay so we have this mushroom we have the meat and next up what else can we uh, draw some tomatoes maybe all right so again just like before uh, I'm going to use the shape of the salami for the tomato, okay? So I'm going to press Control, select on the thumbnail, and then shift it and just fill it with a slightly brighter red. And, okay, it's in the same layer again. So select it, Control, Shift, J to separate it like this. And then create a clipping mask with the hard textured brush. Select slightly darker shade of this, and I'm gonna draw some you no know, curvy triangles like this, or the tomato. It's not perfect and it should not be perfect. All right. Just lift it up slightly. And then seeds, the inner seeds. Just reduce the size just a bit and just paint that same color along the edge just a little bit. And I'll pick a new layer, pick that color, take a lighter shade, push it a bit towards orange, and then maybe a little less orange, maybe lighter. Yeah, that looks good. So one circle in the center, and you just spread it into the darker areas. So Creating the seeds, I believe. And finally, smaller seeds. Nothing too fancy. And then take a new layer, set it to multiply. 
we got texture brush for the shading use the opacity and just put some of that along the edges and yeah we have our tomato as well so i'll put it all inside a group take a duplicate control e so we have a tomato our tomato salami and a mushroom so Let's, let's just spread them across the pizza base now. So for that, I'm going to go to the mushroom layer. Uh, maybe some green like basil. Okay, let's see what we can do. So, yeah, definitely we're going to have some green because right now we have a lot of yellow and red. So we probably do need some green in there. So I'll select, I'll go to the mushroom layer. I'll select this and I'll just move it somewhere. I'll reduce the size first of all. It feels a little too big. Then I'll just control and maybe it can be a little smaller than what it is now. Okay, we can we can have some variation, like some can be large, some some can be a little big. So let's let's distribute it in such a way that there's like two bits of mushroom in every one of these slices. So let's do that. Let's just put these two of two of these mushrooms on these bases or well, some can have one you know life's not that perfect <laughs> see all these mushrooms cool now let's just go to each of these mushrooms select them and it's, we're going to make them random like for example rotate them vary the size So control D is what I'm using for deselecting this. Okay, three more slices to go. Let's try out this, uh, this slice. Two more to go. Let's switch off the salami and tomato layers. We're down to the final slice. And that is it. We are done with the mushrooms. Okay. Finally, oh, um, yeah, it's time for the pepperoni. I'm gonna bring it down below the mushroom layer and uh, the salamis can be of uniform size, mostly.
All right, there was a bit of a break there for me. So, so these are the salamis or pepperonis. So let's distribute them. Unlike the mushrooms, we can have them in between these, uh, you know, junctions as well. So just like before, I'm gonna select the whole thing with a uh, lasso tool and Alt and drag them to wherever you want them. All right, so done with the salami or pepperoni time for the tomato the tomato can be um well, let's 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 um split it into half okay because right now like we there's a lot of too many circles so let's break that so i'm gonna take my lasso tool and just split it down the center like this control shift j so now we have yeah, two bits. I think that this is gonna be better. So let's take this and keep one of one mushroom. Uh, sorry, one piece of a uh, tomato on each slice of pizza. Well, some can have two because again, nothing's that perfect. And now let's vary the size and angle. So any place that has a lot of yellow at this point, or something that we can call as a negative space, can be filled with these tomatoes. I think we more or less have a uniform distribution of tomatoes by now. All right, so we're done with the tomatoes and salami and mushroom. The mushrooms, well, I'll take a duplicate and let's give them a bit of yellowish color. So push the slide colors towards a bit of yellow well yeah that looks that bit better okay all right now, finally, I think it's time to add some uh, onions. So I'll take that um, textured brush, layer, and I'll pick a 
light onion color. Let's use opacity and onions and uh, peppers and olives, and basil leaves can be at the very top. Okay, so they can all lay up on top of any of these. So let's paint some half uh, circles like these set of full rings. So there we go. Onions covered. Next up, we can maybe add some pieces of uh, big pieces of pepper. That might be cool. So I'll take another new layer. Take a green color because we need we really need some green at this point. There's a lot of whites and yellows and reds. Do you agree? Yeah, some of you wanted a bit of green in there. So we will do that. Yeah. So we got some green going on there now. Okay, so we more or less have some green on almost all of the slices. We just can have a bit. All right. I feel like it's a bit thin, so I can just duplicate the layer like this and just you know, push it down. That way it becomes slightly thicker. And control E to merge the two. All right, so onions covered green pepper covered uh, and add some smaller peppers to add some variation in shape so I'll take the new layer and like something that might look like pickles maybe a bit a little greenish uh, yellowish green rather like this yeah this is the color so empty dust draw some smaller peppers in the empty places something like this yeah I think I'm gonna draw one of these and just move them move them around so let's try to get that shape yeah this looks good to me so I'm going to reduce the slide size just slightly and then just put them in the empty places and then move it around oopsie daisy okay All right, so we have that. It's time to rotate these. No 
Okay. And next up is time to add some olives. So new layer, take a very dark purplish color for the olives. Yeah, this looks fine. It's not too black. Should have a bit of color in it and then the olives. Okay, small circles. This one, and I'm gonna just move it around in the empty gaps. So we have a good variation of colors at this point. I think that looks fine. All right. So, anything else? Let's see. Um, maybe some corn. Corn might be good. So, I'll take a medium color, medium dark yellow. Yeah, that looks good. And Let's put some pieces of corn here and there. I think that's good. Have some corn. Let's add some shadows. We're going to be adding the shadows shortly for all of these because these are a little flat at this point. Not going to have the uh, depth. Bacons. Well, at this point, <laughs> well, those biscuit. Let's go ahead and order one right now. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think we have already have a lot of uh, red at this point. Adding bacon would be a bit too much, so let's stick with what we got. So the corn's covered, and I think it's time to add some toppings. Just some, maybe painting some uh, chili flakes and whatnot, occasionally here and there. Right, some darker. And I think that is good. All right. Next up, we're gonna add some highlight to these um, onions and the peppers, okay? So take a new layer on the pepper, take our texture shading br brush, increase the opacity, pick that color, and take a darker shade of that and just 
subtle stroke, that's all. Nothing too crazy. Because we don't want any of this to look completely flat or like a flat vector shape. It have something inside. Just the basic lighting information. This much is enough. And just like that, we should have some highlight as well. So make the lighter shade of the base color, push it slightly towards yellow. And this time with a harder brush, Paint on top of the lighter areas. Do not paint the shadow. Do not paint the highlight on the shadow. Just on the base base color that we had originally. All right, that is done. Time for the onions. New layer, clipping mask. Time to add some shadows. Remember just the basic lighting information, nothing too crazy. All right, almost done. Almost done with the shadow. Time for the highlights. I'll pick a bright white color for that. And again, not on the shadow, but on the base tone. You know the mantra, nothing should be completely flat. Just the basic or minimum uh, adding information adds a great uh, deal of value, a lot of value to it. And for the lighter peppers, I think just some highlights will do the trick for this guy. And we're in the final stages of this illustration. If you're still here, just bear with me just a little bit because we are about to close this session in a few minutes. And time for olives. So the highlights and olives, uh, let's make them a bit vibrant. this color.
almost done. The highlights, add a bit of depth to it with, with some whites, some areas. And we are good here. So more or less everything has a bit of highlight and whatnot. Cool. So let's add some shadow to everything so far. So just duplicate the corns down, set it to multiply, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. You just like size just slightly. Bring down and just maybe increase the value. Okay. That's good. Let's apply the same to everything. Olives, drag down, filter, Gaussian blur. Pull that down. Increase opacity. Slightly same with the peppers, filter, Gaussian blur. Increase the darkness, maybe just a little bit. Bring that down. Lower the opacity. Larger peppers, filter, Gaussian blur, multiply, bring that down. Maybe a bit darker. It's a little darker. Acidity can be a bit less. Done with that. Onions, Alt, drag down, filter, Gaussian blur, multiply, slightly darker. There we have, that's done. Time for the mushrooms, Alt, drag down, multiply, filter, Gaussian blur. That down, Alt, multiply, make it a bit darker. Use opacity slightly. Tomatoes, multiply, filter. Gaussian blur. Bring that down just a little bit. Darker. Reduce opacity. And for the salami, finally. Multiply. Gaussian blur. Slightly darker, reduce opacity. And last but not least, the, no, the corns, they can have some highlight. Reduce opacity. Just a little bit of highlight on the corns.
edit the overlay. Yeah. Use opacity, take a brighter color. Harder. I like. And corns are done. Finally, I think the mushrooms can have just a bit of uh, you know, shadow information. So multiply opacity brush. I'll pick the gray color. And Some shadow. And control B, Change the color of that. Decrease opacity slightly. And yeah. So a pizza is more or less ready. Time to slice it up. So for reference, I'll you know take this and I put the whole thing inside a group. But before that, before that, let's put the whole base inside a group. Oh, pizza inside one group. Okay. And I take a new layer, set it to multiply, and I take the soft round brush, increase the size of the brush, and with the gray color, I'm going to paint just a bit of shadow from below. Add a bit of gradient to make this look overall more yummy. Okay, that's done. Control B, I'll make it a bit reddish, a bit of purple and pink, and I'll just reduce the opacity. Then I'll take a new layer on top, <clears throat> set it to overlay, make a bright yellowish orange color and brush it on and over here so you have a bit of creating play right now and finally I'll take a new layer and let's paint some Purple along the shadow. Some you no know, kicker or backlight. done and next I will take I'll just add a bit of levels adjustment to that so new adjustment layer levels adjustment push the middle slider slightly towards the right and now boy does that not look delicious so but that does make a bit of difference, the whole piece. Okay, one, I can 
I can reduce the uh, um, opacity of this new adjustment layer and maybe lower the opacity of the shadow pass that we created and we can erase bits of it wherever we feel that there can be a bit of highlight like that finally finally it's time to slice this bad boy up so new layer okay hard Your brush capacity can be high and taking this initial guide as a reference I'm gonna be slicing this bad boy up The line shouldn't be too perfect or straight. Just gotta keep that in mind. Alright, I can turn off this reference grid and So as to approach the base, we take up this curve. So we have sliced it up but I think it can be a bit lighter, so control L and increase the opacity this much and maybe set it to multiply and see how that looks. Not too bad, but you know, let's just stick to normal. That looks fine with OK and be below the multiply layer that way it's more appropriate and erase bits of it from the dough and as it approaches the center and create shape like this. That is the center can be you know, the sauce and not completely cheese. A bit of imperfection can go a long way. There's some areas can be a little deeper and darker than the others.
Okay, so we're more or less done slicing it up. Finally, it's time to add some highlight. We take a new layer, set it to overlay, take a bright yellowish orange color, and just paint that highlight in overlay mode along these edges. That'll be our final, final touch to this piece. Okay. And remember that to face the, you know, the light direction. Make sure to vary the intensity slightly. So it shouldn't be too uniform. And we are almost approaching the very last part of the video. And we are done. So let's make the background a bit dark. Put some gradient in there. Maybe some shadow. Go to blur, Gaussian blur. And yeah, so there we go. That was the pizza. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you know. All right, so yeah, good to know Toast Biscuit. Glad to see you after a long time, bro. So for everybody who attended this, live session thank you so much for being here and thank you for your support i hope to see you guys in my future live streams as well and yeah let's, let's do some backgrounds and more fundamentals next time i was thinking of doing something different this time some you know stylized art after a long time and if you guys haven't followed my stylized art series which was a youtube short series you can go ahead and go ahead and check those out so right over here and so that's it for the live stream anyway so thank you for joining the session and so until next time have a good one